Hi, boys and girls. Pastor Bob here from True Life Community. So good to be with you again today. I hope you're having a wonderful Sabbath day. Yeah. You know, the Sabbath is just a wonderful gift that God has given us, isn't it? It shows his love to us. <laughs> I have here some rocks, just some old, ordinary rocks. Look at these rocks. And here's another one. Yeah. So here's a couple of rocks here and a rock here. Which of these rocks do you like the best? Yeah, just plain old ordinary rocks and here's the other one. Which one do you like the best? Maybe you like the, the darker colored one, I don't know. Maybe you like the lighter color, maybe you like the white one. Anyway, I like this one the best. You know why? Because it has a message on it. You know what the message is? I'll show it to you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Isn't that neat? And you know what? You can set it on, a, on your desk or on your table and it'll set just like this. I'm going to put it on my desk so that it faces the door so that the first thing people see when they come into my office is I love you. You know, that's what God says to us all the time. Yeah, he says it in the Bible, in 1 John chapter 3, and all over in uh, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But look at 1 John, the same guy that wrote the, John 3, 16, wrote these words, Behold what manner of love the Father has for us, in that we are called children of God. He loves me, and he loves you. I love you too, and I hope you have a most wonderful Sabbath day today. And you know what? I used to throw rocks, but don't throw rocks. Write a message on them and give them to someone you love, okay? Yeah. Father, I thank you for your love to us. It is shown in so many ways. Go with us today. Help us, Lord, to know that you love us and help us to spread that love to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Greetings to each of you today from True Life Community Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm Pastor Bob Reynolds. We have a special for you today. Dr. Dwayne McKee is going to be our speaker. He's the president of Adventist World Radio. And he has some exciting things happening in far parts of the world. So uh, I know you'll be excited about that. I want to thank the kids for the story today, for listening in. And I want to thank Tammy Romero for opening our worship service today with this beautiful song, Do They See Jesus in Me? And your prayer 
do they see Jesus in me? Well, it's amazing that you Greetings, sir. It's great to be here with you. Kathy and I love what we do. This is the most exciting time of our lives. I keep saying to her, what a time to be alive. So many thrilling things happening almost daily, at least weekly. We get things on WhatsApp, on YouTube, all kinds of reports, text messages, emails. They just keep coming. We praise God for what's happening around the world. Surely Jesus must be coming very soon. We just got this picture. I'll show this picture to you. Let me give you the background of that about Four years ago, we, we were over in Thailand, and we taught people how to use their cell phones, you know, do cell phone evangelism. And, and then they would do that, and they went to, back to China, someplace in China, and they shared with their friends and neighbors, and over 40 were baptized then. Then they went to the Philippines, and we show you a picture here. Of, <laughs> this is so cool. All these people being baptized. They preached in the Philippines, Chinese and English, <laughs> using our projectors and sermons, preached in the Philippines, came back back in China. Now this just happened just a few days ago. Look at that picture. Well, I know you can't see their faces because we don't want you to, but someplace in China, they made their way in the middle of the night to the elder's house. They filled up the baptistry, they had prayer together, and they baptized 41 people. You see, they listened to the cell phone messages, they came together, they had private Bible studies prepared for baptism. What an exciting time to be alive. Amen? When I see these kinds of stories happening almost daily around the world, it is so thrilling and excited to know what God is doing. It's thrilling. Actually, this is the most exciting time of my life. I've been in the ministry, I've been missionary, I've done international evangelism, 
for almost 50 years, but I've never seen anything about what's happening right now. It happens every day almost at AWR. We hear about thrilling, exciting things. Wow, I just, just a report. Kathy read it to me this morning. In a country south of us, a prisoner shared his AWR God pod with another prisoner and another prisoner and another prisoner and another prisoner. They listened to the messages on the God pod. Five of them were baptized. They are all five assassins. They'll never get out of prison. But they have the hope that Jesus is coming soon. I, I once, uh, not long ago actually, I was walking in Spokane and I walked by a bakery and I saw this sign. It said, a balanced life is having two chocolate chip cookies, one in each hand. Actually for AWR, a balanced life is broadcast to baptism. That's what we're about, fulfilling the gospel commission to go and preach and teach and baptize. Amen? Troubled about many things. We're going to look at this. We know there's one thing needful, one thing needful. First, I'd like to share a few things with you about Adventist World Radio. We have studios in India, China, Europe, Africa, Middle East, Far East, Americas, South Pacific, all around the world. We have studios and they are working, broadcasting, preparing lessons, sharing in many, many ways through AM, FM, shortwave, DAB. You know what DAB is? DAB is Digital Audio Broadcasting. We broadcast 24-7 in London, 24-7 in North England, 24-7 soon in Paris and Marseille. On DAB, the Adventist message, the Adventist health message, the Adventist Bible message, children's stories, etc. Thrilling and exciting on DAB. Radio 2.0, AWR God Pods. They're little, little recorded devices that we send around the world in different languages, and they have the message of hope that Jesus is coming soon. Especially people need that in times like this. Crazy times, aren't they? But we're told we have nothing to fear for the future except as we forget how God has led us in the past. Adventists shouldn't be surprised. We are a bit. I had never realized how fast things could change. Boy, changing every day. But it's a time to focus on Jesus. What a time to witness for Jesus. What a time to be alive. Amen? Wow. YouTube evangelism, Facebook Live, social media, cell phone evangelism, internet Bible school, Facebook audio, WeChat radio, podcast, on and on. Every available means of social media, every available means through the internet, any way that we can reach the world, we will do so. Amen? Cell phone evangelism is exciting. It's via WhatsApp, SMS. I just talked to a friend of mine. He's at Berrien Springs. He is the pastor of the Beijing Church. He works with AWR on cell phone evangelism, and it's uh, amazing what is happening. Several times each week with his cell phone, Pastor Louie, he is broadcasting to 35,000 people from his cell phone. Isn't that unbelievable? That's on, uh, on WeChat and, and QQ and YY. Uh, here in the States, we call it SMS. Thousands are listening to and sharing prophetic Bible messages, preparing them to accept Jesus as their personal Savior. If you go to Manila, you see these big, beautiful buildings that they have brought, built up on reclaimed land. And inside those buildings are, well, if you call for support, oftentimes for your, your phone or your computer or whatever, you'll be talking to somebody in one of those buildings. Did you know that? The support comes from there or from India, usually, when you, you need support. We have done almost something very, almost the same thing. Nearby Manila, up in the mountains and the hills at our division office, we have a brand new building and we, we have a center for digital evangelism. And our young people there are, are taking their computers and their cell phones and answering questions that people have from around the world on different topics. They're getting lots of questions now about what is happening. Is the world coming to an end? Wow, can you imagine? the world that we live in today. And so they have that opportunity to, to listen and to answer. 
Adventist shortwave towers, these are in Guam. We reach more than a third of the world's population from these towers in the middle of the Pacific in Guam. We broadcast truth in more than 100 languages on 1,000 stations from on AM, FM, DAB, etc. I want to tell you about Daniel. Uh, just amazing. He's called the executioner. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Cammy did that story. And uh, I put my arm around him. And he, he said to me, you know, he said, I killed the, the vice mayor in this town. He's an executioner. He's now an AWR evangelist up in the mountains in Mindoro. He's, he told a horrible story. And uh, it's, it changed his life. He, he was given his, his orders as to who he should execute. And then he will go out and do it. The last one was a pastor. The pastor fell on his knees and cried. He said, please don't shoot me. But he fulfilled his duty from his orders shot the pastor. He couldn't get that out of his mind. And as he went home, his family was listening to AWR up in the mountains. And they said, Daddy, sit down and listen to this too. He could only stay home for like three days out of three weeks. And he cried as he listened to the message. And he came to us and he said, I'm I'm finished with this last, this, this life. I want to be changed. I put my arm around him and I said, uh, Daniel, I said, as I gave him a video projector, we were training him and, and, and many others, 25 others to be evangelists. I said, you used to be an executioner for Satan. Now you're going to be an evangelist for Adventist World Radio. So he's in the mountains of Endor right now with his video projector, telling others about Jesus. First morning in heaven. Can you imagine, as you walk out your door, and you look to the right and your left, and you see your neighbors? Now, one thing, there's, there'll be no fever there, no virus. <laughs> so you can talk to them and touch them. It's all right. But maybe, just maybe, you may not want to ask them what they did when they were on planet Earth. Maybe you don't want to know. But it's interesting how God can use, he can touch lives, change lives. It, it's just utterly amazing. This is a, a picture of our training that we did in Mindoro. We trained about 25 that day. Of These are executioners and rebels changed lives, people that we just had baptized, and gave them video projectors, AWR video projectors, and they're going up in the mountains. Now, something's happening. The military has come to us, and they said, it's not fair that the rebels, after you baptize them, you give them video projectors, and they can go up and, 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 and teach people about Jesus and the health message. We want to do that too, the military. And so we have just sent over 25 video projectors that work off a flash drive, and Louis, they're going to go up in the mountains, the military, with our pastors, and they're going to teach the people in the mountains about Adventist health message and Adventist Bible message. These are non-Adventist military officers. Can you imagine that? What a, what a time to be alive. Amen? I want to tell you this story. This, this is absolutely amazing. After we had the training in Mindoro, Kathy and I and and Cammie, uh, our team, went up into the mountains. But we had to get up at 3 o'clock. And then we went down one road and we turned around and went back. We finally figured out what was going on. By the time we got there, they said that we didn't want the military to follow us. You see, even though the, the president wants to give amnesty and we're working all that out, this 50-year-old war has brought death to a lot of people. And so because their buddies have been shot by the rebels, and so they were, were trying to make sure we weren't being followed. We, uh, we went into, uh, well, through the river and then up on the mountain, and we waited for three hours. And then we got word we were going to baptize, actually, the, the, the general and some others. And we got word that we can't come down. We said, why? 
they said, we have below you, we were halfway up the mountain, below you in the jungle, we have spotted military. And if we come down, there's going to be shooting. And you Americans are going to be caught in the middle of it, so you need to leave. And we said, thank you very much, we are leaving. <laughs> so we went down through the river and out. Uh, Kathy loved this because th there was a rainstorm and the river came up and it got, uh, got quite deep eventually. And so we had to hang on to hands as we walked through the river and uh, got out. Uh, it, it's a, quite an incredible story. I want to show you just a short video right now. I think you'll enjoy it very much about Mindoro and the rebels there. Find out how AWR Radio has gone past the steel cold guns straight into the hearts of ruthless rebels. This is AWR 360. One year ago, AWR 360 organized events across the island of Mindoro in the Philippines. Along with the broadcasts, many meetings took place and more than 2,000 were baptized. Then soon after, over 77 new villages turned their lives over to the Lord as the layman radio hosts kept preaching. But then some of the new listeners made a surprise visit to one of our AWR radio broadcasters, Robert Dulai. As he was biking home one day, he saw four strangers at his front door. They told him they were rebels. On March 29, 1969, the New People's Army was formed. Armed with weapons, they gradually infiltrated the country. Their goals have been to overthrow the government and establish a Maoist-style communist regime. They regularly ambush police and military forces. Are these men and women to be feared for their brutality, to be rejected and abandoned? Or is God calling his faithful to go out into the highways and byways to preach there too? They pleaded with us to send someone to the village to preach, as they had been listening to the radio and wanted to know more about Jesus. It is now four months later. AWR 360 is heading to the Forbidden Mountain area, in the midst of where these rebels live. Our team boards a small mission helicopter, and it takes us to the top of the mountain. We are welcomed and the natives eagerly give us a tour. It's amazing to see how these precious people live. Then I sit down with Efren, the first one who started listening to AWR. My life was always on edge. I did many things I would rather not talk about. But one day, as I was listening to the radio, something different came on. It was AWR's health program. As I listened, I discovered that these people were helping many with their health problems. They also talked about the supreme healer, one whose life was devoted to others rather than himself. This thought appealed to him, and he felt the need to share it with others. Then he began to wonder, who are these people who are sharing this loving message. He knew he had to find out for himself. I had to know more, so I sought out the speaker of this program. I sent fellow members of my unit to invite him to the mountaintop. The road they took down many times had been used to hurt or injure, but this time it was different. My friends asked him, please come preach to us in the mountains. As they met, Ephron shared how he has a desire to learn more about Jesus. And AWR 360 was happy to oblige. Many layman pastors also climbed the mountain to preach. And soon many new rebels heard about God through the radio and Bible studies. And they too had the need to share it with others. And then the day came when Ephraim himself walked down the mountain, 
with one final request. I want to be baptized, and so do many others. And so, on top of this once dangerous mountain, layman doctors healed those who were sick, and the mouths were cleaned by the volunteer dentists. Our AWR 360 team spoke with many villagers and prayed with many more. Additional rebels arrived because they were interested in witnessing what was going on. Our team preached to them, and then it was time to baptize those who had made their decision for Christ. It was a joyous walk to the baptismal site, and I believe all of heaven was rejoicing with us as we watched Pastor McKee baptize five rebel generals, along with 60 other soldiers. These men who were once killers in the land have now died to self. They have laid down their earthly weapons and exchanged them for a heavenly reward. What I witnessed today was truly a miracle. In one of the most dangerous places on earth, Avenus World Radio boldly went forth so yearning ears could hear the mercy and forgiveness of Jesus. Lives were changed for eternity, and now many more have a new hope of heaven forever. And this is only the beginning. Wow. Over 6,000 have been baptized now, mostly rebels. There in Mindoro in the last three years. Praise God. It's, all, it's a God thing. God touching. I just can't believe, I've never seen anything like this in all my years of international evangelism and, and evangelism and pastoral work. Wow. Rebels, assassins, Bhutan, China. Daily, we're getting reports down south of us here in South America and some of the terrible, terrible areas. People's lives are being changed. This is a, a picture of Philippine outlaws. They were the most wanted couple I mentioned before. And uh, just incredible. Uh, they were assassins. Can you imagine that? Those two young people on your right of the picture, assassins, husband and wife. Their life has been changed because they found Jesus by listening to Adventist World Radio. Unbelievable. And Jesus answered and said to them, what, what a text. Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn with me to Luke chapter 10 and verse 38. A lot of people today in the world and in America are troubled about many things. Troubled about many things. But there's hope in Jesus. I have nothing to fear for the future. Wow. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. How, how many of you ladies have ever felt that way when someone was listening and they weren't helping? Actually, Mary was Mary from Magdala, and she, that's down on the Great Trunk Road. It's a terrible place where as the, the, from the east, as the, the trains of camels would come in with their goods, she was there to entertain them. And this happens around the world today and truck stops and hotels and places that we don't want to talk about, but we know it happens. These young people are troubled and older people about many things. And Mary is one of them. And now she had found Jesus. Doesn't matter if your life is in a mess. Do you know that? When your life is in a mess, the best place to be is where? At the feet of Jesus. And that's the story of Mary. Martha Martha, 
You are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. I want to choose that good part too, don't you? Amen. That will not be taken away from you. When you're troubled about many things, there's no better place to be than at the feet of Jesus. This young man, we just were in Jordan and in Israel, and this young man, he's a Bedouin. You know about Bedouins? They live in, they live in tents. They're nomadic people. They're in Israel. It's kind of a different world. They don't read or write. But a teacher went there to teach them, a Christian teacher, how to read and write. And one day, this young man, Muhammad, as he walked by her car, he saw she was not an Adventist, but a Christian. She had a cross hanging from her mirror. He said, what's that? Well, that's the story of Jesus. Well, tell me. And so the teacher told Muhammad the story of Jesus. He gave his heart to, to Jesus. Eventually, as he listened to Adventist World Radio, we gave him God Pods. He started studying with us, and it was my privilege to be there when he was baptized in the Jordan River by Wiesam Ali. I was with Wiesam. You have to meet this couple. I have a video we're going to show about them in just a second. Unbelievable. Wiesam is our pastor in Nazareth and Israel. This is where Jesus grew up, right? I mean, this is a real place. <laughs> it's there. Half of the city belongs to his family. It's a huge tribe. 20 years ago, his sister went off to Europe to Bogenhofen to the university, our university in Austria, and found Jesus was baptized and he hears about it he talks to the tribal council and they say you must go and kill your sister so he went to kill his sister he called her up when he got to Europe and she said okay you can kill me I knew you were going to but first give me one year he had to because he didn't have her address so she said I've arranged for you to stay with somebody here at the school Bogenhofen what an opportunity he thought I can I can convert these Christians to to Muslims and so he started, he started trying to convert them. And in the end, in the year, he was baptized. He went back to Israel. His family was so mad at him, they stoned him twice, tried to kill him. He left Israel, became a pastor. Now he's back in Nazareth as a pastor there, doing incredible things. Never before have we had so many in church on Sabbath in Nazareth. In Nazareth. And that's where we're going to build a center of evangelism and a radio station right above his church. We just voted that in Nazareth to reach all these countries around. Isn't that thrilling? Incredible. Now, I want to show you this video. It's coming up right now. And then I'll tell you more about what happens when he was stabbed by a knife. My uncle had tried to stone me to death. And now my cousins were here to finish the job. Find out how God is using Adventist World Radio to reach the Muslim community and other difficult to reach areas with the gospel message. Hi, I'm Cami Utman and this is AWR 360. Adventist World Radio is broadcasting to the most remote locations of the world in more than 130 different languages. We've been doing this for the past, well, almost 50 years now, but I've never seen anything like this before. From baptizing rebels and assassins, almost daily we receive news of amazing miracles taking place all around this old ball of mud. We some story right here in Nazareth is an example that especially touched my heart. Being born Muslim, Wiesam was taught to hate Christianity. So when his sister decided to become a Christian, he was sent by his family to kill her. But because of a miraculous dream from God, he decided to begin studying the Bible. He soon returned to Nazareth to share his new belief with his family. And his uncle, upon hearing this, became very angry and ordered his stoning. This happened over and over until finally his brother stepped in. Then his father advised Wiesam to flee the country. Years later, after his father and uncle died, 
Wiesem's mother invited him to return. He immediately saw an opportunity to share Jesus in Nazareth. So he decided to set up a center of influence where he used the Bible to teach English to his fellow people. We also gave Wiesem AWR God Pods, which he distributed among his community. Recently though, things took a turn for the worse as the sons of his dead uncle found out what Wiesem was doing. They too had participated in his stoning many years before and now rallied a mob and went to Wiesem's house to attack him. Wiesem's wife, Audrey, heard the commotion downstairs and rushed out to see what was happening. She knew right away that Wiesem was in serious trouble and fell on her knees and began to pray. Wiesem's brothers rushed to protect him when he was hit with a metal rod, but then his own cousin pulled out his knife and stabbed Wiesem. But to his astonishment, the knife bent, leaving him unharmed. Wiesem's brother then picked up the bent knife and said, Try again to kill the man of God. As the mob retreated, they threatened, You will not know where or when, but we will kill you. Several months later, Wiesem received a shocking phone call that these same two cousins have been killed while riding their motorcycle. It just reminds me that if God is for us, who can be against us? This miraculous event agitated the Muslim community so much that Wiesem knew it was the perfect time to use AWR's cell phone evangelism. He immediately sought out someone to translate the sermons into Arabic. He found a man named Jamil who readily agreed to help. Jamil worked for days, sometimes late into the night, translating the Bible-based sermons. As he read, he was so greatly moved by the presentations that he felt compelled to share them with one of his friends from the Baptist Church. She was so amazed by the sermons that she shared them with her pastor, who was also impressed by what he read. He then sought out Wiesem to preach at his church. Wiesem presented at the Baptist Church, sharing Bible prophecy, our health message, and Ellen White's writings. Their hearts were so convicted that the pastor and almost his whole congregation made the decision to be baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And on a beautiful Sabbath day, we held a church service at the Jordan River. Then one by one, they entered into the water. Wiesem had the joy of baptizing these precious souls with Elder Dwayne McKee. God is calling all who are willing to proclaim His last day message. Adventist World Radio not only broadcasts into the Muslim countries in their own languages, but we are working with people like Wiesem, helping to share the gospel message in countries that still need to hear the wonderful story of Jesus. Thank you for supporting AWR. Jesus is coming soon, and He invites you and me to be a part of this great movement that will light the earth with a knowledge of His truth. From broadcast to baptism, this is AWR 360. Isn't that unbelievable? It's true. We've been there. Wow, that's the knife he's holding there. Actually, this, somebody said to me, well, bent knives. Don't Arabs bend their knives? Yes, they do. This is an Arab knife. This is bent. But you see it's bent this way, not the right way, not on the right side. Actually, stainless steel can't bend. It breaks. We've had several experts look at it, as you saw at the end of the video there. But that's an Arab knife. This is a regular knife right here like he was stabbed with in the back and to the kidneys, which you should bleed out in about five or six seconds into the kidneys. It, this is a regular butcher knife. Actually, if you get stabbed with a paring knife, it's going to hurt, isn't it? And probably you could die with that. But this is a butcher knife. That's what happened. Now, this is the knife. The very one. Yeah, the very one, Cammy. This, this is what Weeson was stabbed with by his cousin who died shortly thereafter in a motorcycle accident. I just want to show 
Uh, well, let's see. This is the very shirt. This so. is the very shirt. And you can look at his shirt. This is down here by his kidneys. The knife went in like this. Did not touch his skin. It touched the hand of an angel. And then came out over here. Like, you see? In, in here and there. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Can you hold it up there? Yeah. There. There you can see it. Stainless steel, 304 stainless, does not bend. It breaks. And then it was dropped. Wow. Can you imagine what it's going to be like to be in heaven? And now, today, we're seeing so many things happening around the world with Adventist World Radio. Thank you, thank you for your support, for your love. Thank you, Cami, for the beautiful videos. Thank you, AWR supporters. We, we are so privileged. Actually, I say, to my, I, say, I say to Kathy often, what a time to be alive. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon, isn't he? Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we are excited. We are thrilled. What a time to be alive. Thank you so much for all your wonderful blessings. And thank you for the assurance that when it seems like all kinds of stuff is happening around us, that you're in control. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Father, thank you. Thank you for what is happening around us. And as we endeavor to reach the world through all kinds of means, I want to thank you for the support that people give to Adventist World Radio. I want to thank you for your church as we reach the world for Jesus so this work can be finished and we'll get off of this old ball of mud and go home. I thank you in Christ's name. Amen.